Tonight I'm starting out with a slightly different style of beer than I usually have. This is Wheat City Wheat Ale from Fort Geary Brewing in Winnipeg. Our wheat ale is a refreshing and light beer. Juicy citrus flavors and floral hop notes balance the grainy malt base. This classic beer loves a patio party and is paired well with seafood and barbecue. Well, it's not my usual style, but I like it. That's a nice summer beer. So, uh, today, I think I'm just going to have a nice, easy time. I'm going to build this little kit that came in a mailbag a couple weeks ago. This is an AC light dimmer. Now, this circuit is about as basic as it gets, and it's very similar to the standard light dimmer that pretty much everybody had on their wall until compact fluorescence started happening, and... Some of them worked with some types of compact fluorescence, but most of this type doesn't work very well with the majority of basic LED lights that you can get these days. Lights like this one that we looked at previously, um, which has just a capacitive dropper in it, and that doesn't uh, play nice with this type. You need a, a special driver circuit to, uh, to deal with uh, this type of uh, dimmer or a better type of dimmer. So as we can see, there's a really limited number of components. We have a capacitor, um, a non-polarized capacitor, a 630 volt uh, 104 J, which I think is a uh, hundred nanofarad. I think so. Um, we have a potentiometer, except for it's not a potentiometer. It is just a variable resistor with a switch on it there isn't a third terminal on it so it's just a variable series resistance and an on off switch we have a 2k fixed resistor we have a small 600 milliamp capacity or capability i guess triac and we have a dual diode aka a diac which is the most specialty uh, component in this whole thing and even that you could replace with two diodes back to back or well, two zeners back to back or even an NPN transistor. If you chose, if you didn't use the base, just cut the base right off and just go collector to emitter um, because they do have a breakover voltage. And that's it. A couple of bits of wire, um, knob and the circuit board. So I think the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly draw up the circuit because this isn't going to take long to solder together. So one interesting thing about this, there is only two connections to the outside world. It goes in series with the load, which is a little unusual. And this one is marked for 220 volts, but I don't think we'll have any trouble running this guy at the lower 110 volt uh, North American mains that I have here. So we have a line in from the, the AC mains. Uh, there is the switch and that goes straight to the, one of the main terminals uh, of the triac, this guy here. Um, we'll draw the other one and gate. And then main terminal one goes straight out to the load. So it's obviously your switching component. Then we have the capacitor comes off here. The capacitor is acting as a timing capacitor in this case. Uh, and we have the variable resistor there. Uh, might as well draw in the, these numbers. 100 nanofarad, and that is a 500K. Um, after the 500K, we have the 2K. So this guy's minimum is not going to be zero. You're not going to get a short circuit into the into the uh, capacitor. Um, and then from here, it just goes back up to the to there. So what's happening is the capacitor is being charged through these two resistors, and that variable resistor is going to impact the charging speed, the charging time, right? 
and then we have our dual diode draw him there and that goes to the gate Should we color that in color those diodes in so for this guy this dual diode here picture two zener diodes back to back it has a uh, well a, a low conducting voltage in one direction and a breakover voltage in the other direction and both breakover voltages are the same so it doesn't uh, because this is in an ac circuit you want both polarities uh, represented right sure so what happens here after the switch is turned on this capacitor starts charging through these two resistors when it gets up to when it charges up to the breakover voltage of this guy it conducts and puts whatever that voltage is onto the gate of the triac when this gate sees a voltage above its turn on threshold and i don't know what it is for this one we'll go and look at it in a minute that turns on the triac it essentially becomes a low impedance path straight across here and that just puts the incoming line straight out to the load triacs they stay on until the sine wave crosses zero so it doesn't matter where it turns on uh if it turn where it turns on the sine wave turns on there or there or wherever it will stay on until the zero crossing then it'll shut itself off now then this timing delay here, this RC timing constant, um, causes a delay at this in the rise of the voltage at this point. So as you change this voltage or this resistance, it's going to change the speed of this timing of this charging here. And it's going to delay that on point to a different part of the sine wave. So instead of getting the full sine wave to the load, it will go then suddenly snap on and shut off at the zero crossing time 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 snap on and back off again and it'll just keep doing that and that's how you get the dimming because you have a smaller percentage of the on time going to your load think of it sort of as reducing the duty cycle on a pwm same effect Okay, now that we know everything we need to know about this, let's just get the soldering. Let's put in the resistor in the diac first. So this little 2K resistor just goes in here. And the diac, being a dual directional diode, doesn't care which way it goes. That symbol is slightly different than how I drew it, but that's basically just looks like two diodes. Uh, going in both directions and that's essentially what it is should i put the capacitor in too sure why not and again it's a non-polarized capacitor so it doesn't care which way it goes so i think the bulk of this video is just going to be looking at the circuit and playing with it a little bit rather than the build because obviously the build is not going to take very much time Not my neatest work maybe i will push that diac down a little bit further so i'll see if i can do it without burning my fingers no i don't think i will be able to do that without burning my finger doesn't matter neatness doesn't count all right i'll throw the triac in hopefully the silk screen is correct i think it is it looked correct when I was tracing the circuit out earlier. And the potentiometer. Just gonna make sure it's not shorting on anything because this is live at line voltage. That's close, but it's not horrendous. We'll we'll live with it. And these big pads and big leads or big tabs on the component are going to suck up a lot of heat and take a bit of time to solder here and then there's these two little short chunks of wire that came with it so might as well use them okay that'll do nicely well then i have a nice little circuit that is alive at mains voltage 
unfortunately the knob is plastic but I kind of want to mount this on something so that I don't get you know dead Let's see if I can find something suitable to uh, mount that on just quickly there that ought to be safe I can't touch that circuit unless I really want to hmm. Knob doesn't fit on there very well. Oh well, that works. So I've got power coming in from here. Well, not right now, but you know, um, I've got a place to plug in my load there, which in this case will be a 30 watt incandescent spotlight. Um, just a little architectural decorative kind of one. So that can go there. And we'll just mark where off is right there okay let's see if it works that's off plug them in over here no explosions yet okay push your bets there we go we have dimming So it looks like it's only really active in the top third of the range there, presumably because this thing is calculated for running on 230 volts, but it looks like it's letting most of the voltage through there. Yeah, maybe that's not quite as bright as it could be. Anyway, it works. So let's see what else we can see about this. Um, I am going to connect my scope probe without a ground because my scope is already grounded so I don't want to ground that to this and cause problems. I've got a 10 meg resistor in series here with my scope. I'm disconnected. I'm just going to put that on the load side here. I've got my scope running over here. So if I plug this guy in, oh, I've also got my scope probe set to 10 times. So whatever voltage we're reading on the scope is going to uh, be one tenth of the reality. So plug that guy in. This is hot now. So I'll turn this on and start turning it up. So there we go. You can see that we have the light kind of dim-ish and as I drew it, we're only getting part of the sine wave. It is staying off and turning on part way up the sine wave slope. As I decrease the series resistance uh, on the potentiometer, the capacitor charges faster and will turn the triac on earlier in the sine wave. So as I turn it up, you see it's going earlier and earlier in the sine wave. So, okay, we've got almost the full sine wave we just got a little front porch and back porch there and you can see that the light bulb is pretty much full brightness let's just get our voltage references in here so that is 17.6 volts peak to peak on the full sine wave which works out to because i've got my probe set to uh 10 times so that is 176 volts roughly peak to peak and 170 times 0 0.7, 119 volts RMS, which is about right. That 0 0.7 is the RMS calculation. Um, take a look at the Wikipedia page for root mean square if you want to figure out how that works. I've explained it before. I don't feel like going through it again right this moment. So what we're seeing right now is just um a part of the very late end edge of the uh sine wave let's bring that down that's 110 volts peak to peak which is about 77 ish volts uh rms which is why this guy is just barely glowing just enough to keep the filament uh from going completely dark Okay, that's unplugged. We're safe. 
Right. Well, that was, that was interesting and kind of fun and a good refresher for me on light dimming from in the old school kind of way. Um, so the old school stage lighting dimmers were essentially that just bigger with better protection, with a much bigger, um, with a much bigger triac, obviously, uh, capable of handling 15 amps or more, um, and series inductors and filters and filters and filters and filters. But essentially it's the same circuit. There's only a few components to do the basic job. I hope that was, uh, interesting. Um, trip down memory lane for some of the old timers in the crowd. Thanks for watching. And now that I've got it unplugged, I can continue on my beer. Talk to you later.